I'm pumped up for this game. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the nightcap. It is the Diane Mosco Foundation Shootout, put on by John Mosco and the rest of the Archbishop Wood Athletic Department. My name is Bob Long. Alongside me is Bruce Badgley and Will Ryan. Or if you happen to have been with us for the past five plus games, your new best friends. <laughs> We're coming into your living room here for one more game. North Catholic against Archbishop Wood. So thrilled to be alongside. And we will turn it over to the national anthem. We're bookending it with the Star Spangled Banner. We did it to start the first game. And now, one more. And we'll do it after a prayer. But North Catholic, a team in the 4A level, that is really, really solid. Talking to Jim Rocco before the game, he said, if we want to make a deep run in the 4A state tournament, we're going to have to play well in games like this. Now we'll turn it over to the moment of silence. And energy in the gym for this one, no doubt about it. And why not? Archbishop Wood, the reigning runners up at the 6A level, taking on North Catholic, an upstart team from near Pittsburgh, Cranberry Township. They're going to run up and down the floor. They're going to be able to hit a lot of three point shots. And Jim Rocco told us they're going to be really, really tough to deal with. And they see this as an unbelievable opportunity to set the stage to play against high level talent and to set the stage for what their goals are this year, Bruce, which is a deep run in the state tournament. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one that uh, these games, some teams have the philosophy that they're gonna go out and test themselves against top flight competition. Other teams choose to kind of ease into a season. Obviously, North Catholic traveling all across the state playing, as you talked about, like the runner-up for the 6A championship as a 4A team. You know, I'm really interested to see how they can compete. Um, you know, so many times teams, you know, get into situations like this, and they may kind of outkick their coverage, okay? I mean, are they playing too large of an opponent or too tough an opponent that really doesn't benefit the team in them being able to work on things or, you know, run a... Uh, you know, an acceptable offense or defense that, that they're that they're so um, so uh, uh, challenged in the competition. Well, let's meet the team from North Catholic. 
Andrew Madelon, the senior at six foot one. He's headed to Roanoke next year to play his college basketball. Matt Ellery, the 6'1 so senior, he'll play the guard position. Nick Larson, a 6'3 junior. Max Hurry, he's gonna be their star. He has got lots of interest from D3 and D2 schools. And then finally, Max Rotman, who will be teammates with Andrew Redelon, Madelon at Roanoke next year. But they go 6-1 right across the lineup except for six foot three, Bruce. So again, they're gonna run essentially a four or five guard offense here to take on some size for Archbishop Wood. Milan Dean standing at six foot three. Josh Reed, six foot three. Carson Howard, six foot eight. Gus Salem, he stands at six two. And then the man of the hour, number one, Jaleel Bethea. Well, I can understand, you know, why North Catholic is expecting to have to run an up-tempo because, you know, that can negate some height. They're, I think, obviously taking the philosophy of trying to out-quick them and get to the spot before Archbishop Wood. So we'll see, you know, who is going to dictate the pace of play. Will Ryan with us here as well. Will excited for this one. The nightcap of the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout, always special. No, absolutely, always a good one. And uh, you think about the last couple nightcaps of the Diane Mosco shootout, of course, the Paul VI famous game, but also uh, last year we had the George School and Archbishop Wood, a really, really competitive game. So looking forward to another one. John Mosco always puts together a good schedule for this great event. Yeah, thank you to John for having us. Also an excellent job. Wonderful funds and awareness raised for the Diane Mosco Foundation. That's really what it's all about. But this is a close second. High level high school basketball. And it's live here on Bob Long Sports and from Archbishop Wood High School. Archbishop Wood, the runners up in 6A. They are dressed in white. Salem now gets his back to the basket. Jaleel Bethea for three. No good, and here comes that vaunted North Catholic offense. Rotman. Here's Max Hurry turning back for Rotman. Archbishop Wood, they're going to start in this man to man look defensively. Ah, oh, beautiful steal off the bat. Milan Dean, pull up three. No good. And Salem got a hand on it, but a nice job by North Catholic's Andrew Madelon. But just one step ahead of himself, Matt Ellery. Tried to one hand that pass as it was heading out of bounds. Full court pressure here now by North Catholic. A big student section to our right. You'll certainly see that as we try to get shots in the corner. We're just gonna do our very best. Open three, Bethea, that one is short. No good on the floater from Josh Reed. I'm interested to see how North Catholic is gonna defend against the boards and wow, Max Hurry. Three nothing, North Catholic, and that's exactly what they can do. They can shoot over top of defenses. They try to get into their sets offensively very quickly. Gus Salem, tough shot, too strong. And one and done for Archbishop Wood. A lot of contact wasn't called. Salem, he'll try for three. And a foul is gonna be called. It'll go against North Catholic's Matt Ellery. Another look at the tail end of this one here. Howard, good position. Ellery, just a little out of position, a good call. Yeah, that's why I think, you know, Wood's probably gonna tailor their Offense to, you know, just standard half court. They have such a height advantage. I think it's going to lead to a lot of second chance points. Jaleel Bethea, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc, but nobody grabbed Carson Howard. Two offensive rebounds on that possession alone. And that's a big thing there, Bruce. The largest guy, the tallest guy at 6'3 for North Catholic. Couple of possessions, they were able to go one and done. Grab the defensive board, but not on that possession. Yeah, and Wood just taking 
a note from the North Catholic book there. They are playing aggressive defense well out beyond the three-point line. 5.35 to play, first half. Now North Catholic just working the ball around, forcing Archbishop Wood to run. Nice finish. Inside, it's Andrew Madelon, 5-2 North Catholic. Yeah, and you know, the spacing is such that they really force the man-to-man -man defense and a nice steal here by Hurry. Contact, they say an offensive foul. Gus Salem stands in, 50-50 call there. He tried to Euro step to cast past Salem. Certainly didn't quite take him straight on. The official in good position, Wood Basketball. And full court again here for North Catholic. The Trojans. It was really good defense by North Catholic. As soon as Reed came across the timeline, I believe it was Reed. Uh, Matt, Deuce Maxey. Deuce Maxey. They sent a second defender there, and now it's either a travel or a jump. Fortunate for Archbishop Wood that it's a jump, because at least it will switch the arrow. It'll still be North Catholic ball. Tell you, number two, Andrew Madelon, he is fired up, man. Caused that tie up, but he went down fist pumping all the way down court. Well, this North Catholic team is under no pretenses that they're anything but the underdog here tonight. Nice block in there by Archbishop Wood. Here comes Deuce Maxey and Bethea. Skip pass for Salem. Corner three, in and out. And they were trying to just block out, but too much contact. He went down. The foul will be called against Jason Sickett. Boy, some tough luck there because North Catholic had some really good position inside. And as I mentioned, that's the one item that I'm really watching is how North Catholic is going to contend against all that height inside for Archbishop Wood. Three shot foul with that three coming from the corner. Salem two for two. Two of three. Maxi came down with it. Everything but the finish and now North Catholic. They got numbers, three on one. Madeline turns on a dime. Dribble drive. Sets for three, oh, yes. That was just sweet by Max Hurry. Pump fake, wide open, buried it. He's got six of the eight for North Catholic. Skip pass and a foul will be called. Already the, well, we have three on the board. Are they gonna tick it up to four? I don't believe, yeah, so four team fouls wow. against North Catholic, nothing yet for Archbishop Wood. There's the first foul against Archbishop Wood. A charging foul called. It goes against Howard. Great position on the out of bounds there. Really anticipated the pass. Now some pressure here by Wood. Max see, Hurry. See if that, I, did, I think that kind of plays into North Catholic's hands. Well, that's a giveaway though. Now, right oh, into Wood. Bethea, that's so good. That is so good. <laughs> Snatches it out of midair, throws it down with authority. Deep three. There's oh, an answer man. for you, Max Hurry. That, that was sweet. Just. Brilliantly breaking the, the press right to the high post. He dishes to hurry. And a block. Oh, and they're loving it here. Jason Sickett, are you kidding me? I'm telling you what, these Trojans are fired up, baby. They really, really are. And Sickett leading the way. And there's the block. Wow.
Bethea, deep three. No good. He's over from beyond the arc. Last touch by Gus Salem. 3.22 to go. Bruce Will, I'd contend to say, atmosphere wise, maybe the best atmosphere of the day. If not, would be Reading and West Catholic. Yeah, absolutely. But oh, that's a great double team on the sideline there. Wow, hurry, hurry got rid of it though. Three. Bang! Oh my Bang! God. Madeline! Madeline! Wow! Great team effort there on that possession by North Catholic. Five point swing. Jaleel Bethea, you know he can hit it, but not that time. See, not really in the flow of the offense. Absolutely right. They've got to flow their offense. That's where they're going to shine. North Catholic. How about this team, huh? North Catholic baiting them into that tempo. And they're telling people about it, too. Andrew Madelon. He's not even the one that made the shot. <laughs> he's screaming to the crowd. Timeout. Matt Ellery hits a big three, and it's 17-6. He's got a foul shot coming after the timeout. Incredible. Just, you know, you get these teams, and they literally will bait their opponent into their style of play, and that's exactly what Central York is Listen, doing. Listen, I can go and bait opponents into my style of play all I want. <laughs> I'm not making that many threes consecutively. This team is shooting the pill. That is that. A hot start, and I tell you what, just aggressive play. Great start here by Max Hurry and Andrew Madelon. All right, now this is a game of runs, and you know the talent that Archbishop Wood has. You know that John Mosco, Ed McCormick, and the rest of that staff over there is saying, okay, so what? Now what are we going to do, right? And so now Archbishop Wood, can they creep back into this one, pull on that home crowd advantage? Well, I think it just requires some patience on offense. I mean... Through traffic, that's a tough shot, and fouled on the play. Helping him up is Madelon, he's the one who committed the foul. That's the fifth team foul against North Catholic, and that's the other thing to keep an eye on here. More than two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Wood's gonna find himself in the bonus in the, in first, the first quarter, quarter at this yeah. point. Your thoughts, Will, early on? Yeah, no, absolutely. This, this North Catholic team is just shooting the ball really, really well, and Archbishop Wood's shot selection early on has been a bit undisciplined. I mean, Jaleel Bethea has put up five threes already. Milan Dean kind of opened up the game with a pull-up three. Uh, if they start getting to the rim a little bit more and getting to the free throw line, knocking them down, that'll open up more in the offense type threes. Milan Dean. Smooth, two for two from the line. And again, there goes North Catholic. And I'm just going to let everybody know that we're going to miss some shots in the corner. It's just the way it is. Tight gym, homey, great atmosphere. Oh, what a shot. That one almost went down. Fouled on the play with Sickett. He'll shoot two. Yeah, good call there. Mike Green had his arm kind of to his side. And just as, so, so as the, uh, excuse me, as the Trojan kind of extends out, Mike, arm, Mike Green's arm also extends out. Uh, Looks like a foul more than it is a foul, but it is a foul as well. Now remind me, because it's the stuff of legends, Will, and you remember the seven overtimes more than you do the eventual winner. Did Wood win that game? They did not. They did not. And I believe they lost by one to George School as well last year. So looking to get back on the winning Winning graces here at the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout. Now, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It's like when you look at Penn State's record in the whiteout and why is it, you know, just a little bit above 500? Well, it's always the best game. They're bringing in tremendous teams here, challenging, challenging themselves early on. Led to several state title appearances, so you know it works, the way this team schedules. But looking to earn a win here tonight after a couple of tight losses in recent years in this very event. No doubt, and the year in between the Paul VI game and the, uh, the George, George School. School game was the COVID year, of course, where uh, only a PCL and um, state and district scheduled. There was no preseason, shouldn't even say preseason, but non-league games. Green, no, but how about that follow? 
Josh Reed climbs above the rim. Yeah, that was the item that I was really worried about is how North Catholic was gonna defend or, or work the boards, but a nice move there by Madelon. Madelon and North Catholic doesn't give Archbishop Wood any time to breathe. You know, Archbishop Wood is working hard on the offensive glass and in this offensive set. And before you blink, North Catholic is throwing two on the board on the other end. 1.45 to go here in the first quarter. You just need to take their time, work for the good shot. I tell you. You can't get 11 points back in one possession. Bethea defended well on the outside by Rotman. He's one of those two guys, along with Madelon, going to play at Roanoke next year. Jaleel Bethea, no good. And here comes Hurry. And that should be a double dribble, but not called. And finished by Andrew Madelon. Tell you what, this Trojan team not intimidated. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's a fantastic finish. Milan Dean showing off the athleticism, but not getting back on the play. Oh, my. And Dean is called for the foul. Will they call it in the act of shooting? I wouldn't blame them if they say no. I wouldn't, but I tell you but what. But they did. It, yep. I, you can't really get mad at either call there. The Trojan team has really got some guts out there, don't they? There was a quiet confidence when I talked to Jim Rocco. By the way, salt of the earth, just a great guy. Spent time with me before the game. Told me anything I needed to know. But there was a quiet confidence here. He knew who they were playing. He knew what type of event he was at. He knew that his team felt really fortunate to be here and to have this opportunity. But he knew that his guys were ready for it. And a good substitution there by Coach setting some of his starters with a minute to go. He's got an 11 point lead. Give him an extra blow. Make sure they don't pick up a cheap foul either. Fouls have kind of evened out here. Six for North Catholic and four against Archbishop Wood. There's a three from Green. It's good. Michael Green. And Archbishop Wood very much better about getting back into the half court defensive setup as well on this possession. But good spacing here by the Trojans. Well, maybe you spoke too soon, but they're able to figure it out anyway. Here's Rotman with 26 seconds left. And North Catholic perhaps looking to take this one down to the final whistle here in the first quarter. Rotman is guarded by Milan Dean. Now 10 seconds left. Here is Matt Ellery. Open three. Got oh, it! God, what a great play there by Madelon. And Archbishop Wood won't even get a shot off. That was so fantastic there. He stuck at the high post, dished it off, stepped back, made the three. Beautiful play. Hold on, folks. We saw a lot of very impressive results for North Catholic. Now we're getting a benchmark, aren't we? We're getting a benchmark against a team that we know is going to be there in March. Yeah, see, this is what's great about preseason, these items. As we get into, you know, the PIAA tournament, that these are games that as you evaluate teams and whether they're contenders or not, this is one of those connect-the-dot games. Exactly. You know? when, when you can get two different districts kind of going at it, that gives you a better idea of, you know, what the state tournament's going to be like. Or in the case today, district tournament. Seeing uh, for District 3 watching... Central York and Reading High. If those two teams aren't at the top of the 6A bracket come district playoff time in District 3, I'll be shocked. Those are two good basketball teams out there we saw today in District 3. Well, we'll say this again for all the folks watching alongside, and if you've been with us all day, thank you, first and foremost. Second of all, ask you to kindly and humbly ask you to uh, oh. go ahead and... Hit that subscribe button. Yeah, subscribe. How about where are you at? We haven't been doing much of that today. Yeah, there you go. Where are you at? Where are you at? Let us know where you're watching the game from. Oh, by the way, checking in with the folks on YouTube. Uh, by the way, Chuck and, and Shizo, I think that's how you say it. I'm going to go ahead and delete your comments. I appreciate it. The question was, did the game start? I'm sure you were asking sometime around 8 o'clock. Father Judge and Central York went to the wire. Actually, a game winner at the buzzer by Kavar Kennedy. 
And so that pushed the start time of this one back. Of course, now you see this game going, and what a game it has been. So we're going to delete those couple of comments, but uh, let us know where you're watching the game from. And hit the subscribe button. Bob Long Sports, your place for high school basketball in Philadelphia and beyond. What now, hurry. In no hurry, I know I'm not the first one to have made that joke, but he pulls it back. Wood looks like they want to extend the defense out here. Max Hurry, Madelon, looking for the back cutter. Instead, he'll go baseline himself. And they are in no hurry, and you'll take that foul all day long. Milan Dean picks up the personal foul. A couple folks checking in, and Shizo, and I hope that's Shizo, Shizo, watch from North Philly. And Steve, the legend, self-proclaimed, says hi from Huntington Valley. Madelon, yeah. he is fouled, and Deuce Maxi picks up the personal. And he knew when he had Michael Green in the post position that he was right where he wanted to be. Really uh, strong move. Absolutely. And that is a real mismatch for Archbishop Wood having Mike Green on Madelon. And by the way, Steve the Legend, I, I kid. You, it might not be self-proclaimed. I'm, I'm sure the nickname was given to you. All seriousness, thank you so much. And I don't believe it's the first time I've seen your name on our broadcast. So thank you for coming back. Really appreciate it. Two for two from the line, 29-15. So Wood really trying to get some type of, you know, consistent offensive flow. And North Catholic really not allowing it by really pressing it all the way into the backcourt. Bethea yet to get going at all. Michael Green, he's going to run point up top. Josh Reed looking for Howard. Good seal. He goes to the basket and just couldn't finish it. They got to make those. They just have to make those. Just enough for Max Rotman to contest. Now hurry, body control, everything oh. but the finish. It was halfway down. Now numbers for Archbishop Wood. Bethea. Reed, spot up, in and out. And cleaning up the board again is North Catholic. Madelon, what oh. a finish. Andrew Madelon, the pass almost led him like a quarterback would a receiver to go baseline, right? And he kind of caught him on his left hip. He's like, okay, I'm going baseline and had a great finish. Used the basket as a shield for the defender. And look at that. It was over the back. Didn't get called. And a nice finish. Josh Reed, much needed. And second chance points. Got it up on the rim. Oh. Carson Howard maybe did just enough. Green for three. Short. Could kind of tell that one. Green's got great arc on his shot, but with great arc, you can kind of tell where the ball is going to end up, and you saw that one was short. And all I can tell you guys is that this North Catholic team has just baited Wood into really taking some bad shots, but here's a good one. Big oh. time. Big time. Josh Reed. Four forty-six to go. Archbishop Wood starting to create second chances, starting to get turnovers, and they're going to get another one right here. Starting to squeeze this Archbishop Wood defense is anaconda-like, right? Just starting to apply that pressure to North Catholic. No doubt. Well, but it's still, you know, despite the turnovers here, I'd really like to see Wood get into some better offensive flow and work for a high percentage shot. We've said this seemingly all day long, but 
for these teams to be challenging each other like this before Christmas, yeah. it's going to pay dividends for, regardless of who wins. Does North Catholic win? Does Archbishop Wood come back? It, it doesn't really matter. They got their own leagues to play in. They got their own different classifications in the state to go try to win. Both these teams have expectations to make deep runs. Oh, man, oh, man. Boy. Tough call there. John Mosco doesn't like it. I don't blame him. There's a lot of late movement there. Yeah. And I think it's Dean beating the defender to the spot. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that would have been a good no call. Or a block. But yeah, tough one for Dean. He has to come off the floor. Seventh team foul against Archbishop Wood. So remember, North Catholic started with five fouls to Archbishop Wood zero. Now it's seven fouls against Archbishop Wood and six against North Catholic. So we're in the bonus the rest of the way here for the half? Yes, for both teams. Now, of course, that one doesn't qualify because it was an offensive foul. Baseline drive, good look inside. Extra pass, Rotman in and out. A man's rebound there by Jaleel Bethea as he tiptoes the baseline. Deep three for Gus Salem. There it is. Wow, and nice here shot come the Vikings. And Bethea nearly kept that one in. Bethea not happy with the referee's position there. Uh, but Woods really picked up the intensity on the defensive end. Three fifty-seven to play, second quarter. What a game it's been thus far! All the way to the hoop. Oh, oh he had a shot wide open. No good. The second pump fake. He sure did. There was nobody near him after that second pump fake. Well, as Key and Peel would tell you, you cannot pump three times. <laughs> oh it's a flag. God. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. Thank you, Will. I appreciate you getting that one. <laughs> He's still laughing. <laughs> I got him. I got him with that one. Here's Gus Salem. They're trying to get it into Howard. They are doing an awesome job fronting him. Jaleel Bethea had it pulled away, and now he nearly oh. gives it away. Gus Salem, pull up. Howard. Good no yes. call. Yeah. Really nice no call. Yep. And Howard has been good on the glass. It's been a big part of the reason that Wood is coming back into this game. Max Hurry tags two more to the board himself. 2.57 to play, second quarter. Jaleel Bethea, love him getting to the rim like that. Open three, back iron. Same team. And what do we have now? The foul is going to be called first on Madelon. Certainly Jaleel Bethea got his arm up towards the head and neck area of Madelon. But the foul came there against Madelon, and there's kind of that swing of the elbow, which... I think it could have gone either way. Well, but. I could have seen it being a foul on the floor against Madelon, and then perhaps after the play, some sort of flagrant one against Bethea. You with me on that, Will? Yes. Uh, let's see now. Uh, both teams in the bonus here. Yeah, these free throws could be huge for Bethea. He's really struggling from the field thus far. Um, has, it, has that big-time dunk earlier, but... In terms of his jump shot, it's been off early, so an opportunity to, to kind of get right at the line. Front end of the one and one, no. And he nearly commits a foul. They say no. But they, big points left on the uh, on the floor there, Will. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you know, if you're having a bad shooting day in practice, you go to a side hoop and uh, you, you do a couple form shooting and, and you're back to normal. In a game, you don't have that luxury of getting a couple shots up, so free throw line, so important. I tell you, I, I like the fact that North Catholic's been able to rotate in a few people, but hurry. Chad's wow. a little too much English on it, but he'll shoot too. Good off-ball movement as Madelon was trapped. And it's all 
it's all based on the spacing here. They're going right to the ball. They're coming across the lane. The defense isn't reacting. Good offensive flow here by the Trojans. With that kind of spacing, there's no help. Curry, I'd say, Bruce has been as advertised to this point. He sure has. And been we, fearless out there on both ends. And, and looking at the whole day, we've seen a lot of guys who, you know, we were excited to see, and they've been ad, as advertised, if not better. Uh, it's been a really, really nice day, both team performances and some individual performances as well. Boy, how about that finish for Father Judge as well as Green glides wow. to the hoop. Uh, See, a great, great move there, right to the basket. Two minutes to go in an action-packed first half. Archbishop Wood have done much better defensively here in the second quarter. If my memory serves, North Catholic scored 27 in the first frame. Could be a little off on that, but the defense has been much better. Floater, nice finish. <laughs> I tell you what, I just love this North Catholic offensive flow. These guys are moving at a mile a minute. Matt Ellery, and the body control as well. You don't want to get that deep anyway because of the shot blockers. Keep yourself under control, and, and the expertise in that floater is impressive. And the Trojans have three bench players out there right now. Salem, back cut. Nice finish. Love the offensive set. And it's Josh Reed. Final minute left here in the second quarter. And a moving screen offensive foul called against Ellery. Boy, bad break there. It is an offensive foul, so Archbishop Wood won't go to the line. Ellery will stay on the floor for the final 57 seconds. And there was a missed offensive foul earlier in that possession. Bethea kind of got a shoulder to the face. Uh, so if they miss the first one, they're definitely going to get the second one. Josh Reed. Reed goes one-on-one -on, -one on Hurry. Green. Interesting. I don't know that that's the shot selection there. And North Catholic will put it in their pocket for the last 35 seconds. Yeah, he had an open mid-range, passed it up for a contested three. Yeah. Well, and also he ended up right next to Jaleel Bethea. Maybe Bethea was the intended target on that initial pass. Tough to tell. Well, I got to believe a hurry's going to handle it at the end. Hurry, lost the footing. He's got Bethea up the floor. Good vision, Jaleel Bethea. Uh-oh, Bethea looking to get into it a little bit with number 24, Max Rotman. I don't think there was anything dirty from Rotman. No, he was just trying to stop the basket, as anybody would. And Bethea is still kind of approaching him there. Again, tough day for Bethea at this point. He's the featured guy offensively, maybe he just felt some contact he didn't take kindly to. Had one of the best games that I've ever seen. I mean, ever. And had the pleasure to be out there in Chambersburg for a state quarterfinal when he hit 11 triples. And you can find that highlight somewhere out there on YouTube on Bob Long Sports. Hey, if you subscribe to us, you know, you'd have access to things Absolutely. like that, right? You well, see, everybody's got access, but we would like you to subscribe so that you're notified when it goes live. Absolutely right. But he was incredible. 37 points on 11 threes, a two-point basket, and two free throws. And with a sweet stroke like that, you can see why. Down to three seconds. Rotman. And it's blocked. Still a great half for North Catholic. They really dodged all the bullets. I think Arch Archbishop Wood, I think, has got to get into a much better offensive flow. Too many 
low percentage shots in the repertoire. And I think that's the difference. I think North Catholic's uh, uh, ability to, to get some rebounds and, and kind of go toe to toe with Archbishop Wood on the boards. We'll take a break here. Game six of six, just a lowly 16 minutes of basketball to go. Can you believe that? I can't Bruce? believe how fast it went. It really has been an excellent day. And the wonderful basketball fans across Philadelphia, the state of Pennsylvania, and beyond have made this so much fun. Some great viewership, and we look forward to more here in the second half on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above. And the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design, relocation planning and budgeting, helping you manage your vendors, construction oversight, all with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value, value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know Gola. Gola gets it. At Meineke, we care about your family. So this winter, let Meineke keep your car on the road, saving time and money. Take advantage of Meineke's complete auto repair services. Whether it's tires, brakes, exhaust, or tune-ups, at Meineke, we do it all. 
And all services are backed by Meineke's nationwide guarantee. Whatever car repairs you need, come to Meineke. Because at your locally owned and operated Meineke, we do car care right. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! <laughs> Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Ferangeli, our guest picker for the evening. The coaches at LaSalle are great because they strive for you to be your best. I was able to maximize my full potential in terms of opportunity in football, wrestling, and lacrosse. They're going to be pushed to be the best they can be in the classroom, on the field, in the pool, and just overall as a person. Student first, athlete second. Before you have success in the field, you have to have success in the classroom so you can be on the field. One thing I think makes LaSalle Athletics stand out are the facilities that we have. One thing I think makes the athletic programs here so strong is definitely the coaching and the staff. I think I've improved as a competitor here at LaSalle because I'm always being pushed by coaches and by my peers. Seeing my peers work hard makes me want to work harder as well. No matter what your interests are, every single person here is going to make sure that you're able to fulfill your dreams and what you want to do. What allows us to keep winning is just our really strong sense of tradition and pride. We know that 30 years before us they won the PCL, so we're going to go out there and we're going to do our best to succeed like the guys before us did. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. I'd say that LaSalle fuels my passion because it has such great programs with what I'm interested in. LaSalle affords you the opportunity to get involved in as much as you possibly want to. There's tons of different clubs and activities with any different interest you could have. No matter what you're doing, you'll be supported by your peers and LaSalle be, will become a place that you love to go to and you will want to go to every day. I think it was pretty easy to make friends. I feel like the most friends I made came through my extracurriculars. What I love about LaSalle is you could make relationships with, uh, with other people by getting out of your comfort zone. That's what LaSalle really teaches us, to be open and be open to meeting new people. You're always going to gain something from clubs. Even if you find out that that club like isn't for you, you're still going to pull something away from it, come out with new friends, have new connections. Getting involved definitely helps you uh, meet new people. You want to come to LaSalle because you want to be able to explore. You want to be able to try a number of different opportunities we have to offer here. You're going to really discover what it means to be not only a LaSalle gentleman, but also develop with your own passions and have all these different opportunities to try things. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. 
Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back, folks. Bob Long, Will Ryan, and Bruce Badgley. And now we're zooming in on the Gatorade, uh, the banner across the way for Gary Martin, one of the most highly decorated track and field athletes in the history of the state of Pennsylvania, which is really saying something. Ran a sub four mile, is now at the University of Virginia. By all accounts, just a, a great and humble young man as well, a great representative of Philadelphia Catholic League Athletics. But we're underway in the third. North Catholic blitzed Archbishop Wood in the first half. The Vikings did start to come back. And now it's a seven point contest. Anybody's ball game in the nightcap of the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout. Rotman, that's a deep three for Madelon. It was halfway down. I like the, uh, the offense there where they drive it and kick it out. Pretty deep three, but you know he can hit it. Now Milan Dean barely drew any iron. You know, Archbishop would have just got to get more patient on offense. Hurry, you know he can hit it, but didn't that time. Man's rebound by Jaleel Bethea. Great look for Carson Howard. And there's that Archbishop Wood offense that we know. Right, defense, defensive rebounding, Bruce, leads to offense. And that was the thing that I feared most for North Catholic is how are they gonna compete on the boards? Rotman, step back, got oh. it! Well, that's how they compete. They don't need rebounds when they shoot it like that. Boy, Rotman hasn't shot much, but he that was a good one there. And that one hit the side of the backboard, and, and Jaleel Bethea bats at his chest. He knows that was his fault. Hurry, bang! Oh. Max Hurry from another zip code. That was halfway down the turnpike on the way back to Pittsburgh. My gosh, take that. Jaleel Bethea contact and they wave off the shot. First team foul against North Catholic. All right, I I'm done saying that Archbishop Woods needs to get more patient on offense. These guys can play, man. <laughs> I mean this. I was not particularly familiar with North Catholic's work until I was looking into them leading up to this event. I was impressed with what I saw, without a doubt. And this validates it, Bruce. It really does, win or lose at this point. So I can talk about an actual conversation that Bob and I had. We were looking at the box score from their game against Devin Prett, and they got out-rebounded, I believe, 26 to 10. We'll resume this conversation after this Jaleel Bethea drive. And a blocking foul, he'll shoot two at the line. They had 10 rebounds in an entire game, and Bob and I both go, well then how did they put up 67 points? Yeah. I mean, this team can score, and it, it, they play to their strengths, so they're not a great rebounding team, they accept that, and they're gonna go out and do what they do best, the best. Well, my other thought was that Devin Prep shot the lights out. <laughs> Wh mean, which was also correct. Both teams, mean, both teams shot the lights out. Listen, even 10 defensive boards and a half is commonplace, right? I'm not even talking about getting on the offensive glass. I'm saying... It's commonplace for Carson Howard. <laughs> yeah, right. And you start to see that twine, that net start to rustle there. You hit some foul shots. Things can start to open up for you a little bit. There's no doubt. There is no doubt. And, and he needs guys like Milan Dean and, and Gus Salem kind of driving and opening it up for him because you know, he, he'll shoot from very, very deep. But of course, he would rather take you know, wide open, uncontested threes. That would have been a violation had Jaleel Bethea missed the foul shot, but it is back to seven, which is how we entered halftime. Max Hurry, and on the second poke from behind, he's fouled by Milan Dean. I think Wood's starting to figure out this North Catholic offense, but still, North Catholic been able to 
even though they've been long range, they've been some, some pretty good open threes so far this half. Rotman, he'll drive on Carson Howard. Corner three, no good, didn't draw any iron. Max Hurry. And now Madelon will spin into the lane, tough shot, yes! Just see how they move that offensive flow to leave the lane open so that they can drive to the basket. Beautiful offense there. 5.23 to go in the third quarter and North Catholic just has answer after answer. Step back, Salem! Look. And fortunate, I think, that Carson Howard was not called for over the back. Not gonna say anything, I can't say it anymore. <laughs> okay. I said I wasn't gonna say it anymore. All right, well I'll say it. He's fortunate not to be called forever the back. <laughs> but I'm just. Here's Max Hurry. Good defense there by Salem. I don't think he really meant it to throw it out there. Open three. It's Are good. You kidding me? Matt Ellery hits it again. And every time Archbishop Wood comes within seven, North Catholic has a mini run of their own to answer. Here's Deuce Maxi. Maxi, that's a good look in the lane. Yeah. Create a little bit of space. That's a nice take by Deuce Maxi. Hurry. No, and then Howard comes down with it. Maybe the first hurried three in quite a while. I tell you what, I just marvel at these Trojans. And, you know, Archbishop Wood, though, there, I thought w really worked for the, for the good shot. It came early in the offensive possession, but very high percentage in the lane, and they got to continue to do that. Here's Gus Salem. Salem, guarded by Ellery. To the basket, good finish. Maybe a moving screen on Howard. Jim Rocco, pretty defiant in that belief. But another mini run by Archbishop Wood and back and forth we go, an eternity left. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Oh, good switching defense there by Wood. Ellery, now Rodman, got a step. Inside he goes, <laughs> and the finish from Nick Larson. Man to man here. Howard, good catch. Fortunate there. Honestly, fortunate that he lost possession of the ball because otherwise he's blowing through that defender and it's a charge. But Wood's starting to rule on the boards and get inside. <laughs> Just need a couple stops. Really good jump switching defense from Archbishop Wood. I mean, I guess I'm just mirroring what Bruce said a minute ago, but it's that good. Extra pass, hurry, got into the lane and a really nice call by the official there. Just the grab and that held Murray, uh, hurry and Max Hurry from getting into the lane. But I love the patient offense uh, by North Catholic. It's, it's snappy, it's speedy, but they're patient. They're working for the good shot. Marcus Dixon checks into the game, replacing Carson Howard. Clemson commit, not for basketball, but for football, uh, an all-world tight end, really. So. Exactly right. And they know how to produce tight ends at Archbishop Wood. Just oh, a little bit. Kyle yep. Pitts. And even before that, Webb was fantastic. And they just, they're going to let this one play. Three on two coming the other way. Extra pass. Deuce Maxi. Bingo. Now that is the transition offense, stepping into a three. The transition creates the look. Oh, good move. Count it, and one. The body control from Andrew Madelon. Every time North Catholic has answered. Just that little body nudge in there to go into and then off of Deuce Maxi, prevent any type of shot block on the play, also creates the contact and induces the foul. Just excellent from the senior Madelon. 
Yeah, just real smart basketball so far by North Catholic. And a good timeout. Full timeout on the floor, 2.36 to play. And we'll tell you about what's coming up next on Bob Long Sports. Gosh, no, not tonight. Oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> it for us here today. But, Will, you won't be on the broadcast. You'll be on, uh, on, on the floor, on the, on the roster for LaSalle. Uh, on Wednesday evening, tell us about the game. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, on Wednesday evening, the, the 21st, uh, LaSalle takes on Lincoln High School. That game was originally scheduled to be against uh, Springside Chestnut Hill. Springside Chestnut Hill has two excellent uh, fifth-year players, but PIAA rules uh, don't allow teams to play against fifth-year players. Uh, that's Alison Amadou and Jaron Morton. I mean, two really, really excellent fifth-year players. Uh, Amadou going to Marquette. Morton uh, with Division One looks. Um, so it makes sense that SCH wouldn't want to play without two of their starters um, so that we couldn't really come together and, and end up uh, playing against Springside Chestnut Hill. Luckily, we were able to reschedule with Lincoln, which was a similar situation to what happened last year. Uh, Central canceled and uh, LaSalle uh, rescheduled with Lincoln. Lincoln, a completely different team this year. Yeah. No Chris Murray, uh, no Matt Williams, no Nizzy. Uh, Nizzy's now at uh, MCS. And, uh, and no Mel Lindsay either. Their, their head coach has moved to Girard College. Um, so it's going to be a very, very different Lincoln team than uh, the one that we saw last year. The one that you had a, a kind of famous call for a, a Sam Brown poster dunk in that game. Oh, uh, yeah, good times there, absolutely. Always fun to go a little viral. I'd say we've gone a little viral here today. A lot of views over the course of the afternoon, and we really appreciate that. Nice backdoor cut by Jaleel. Maxi, pull up. He's really good from there. Wow. Really Look. good from there. Wood was a little slow getting back. Let's see if they get going to get paid for it. Nice job to reset, and Rotman will have to pull this back. A little bit different defensive look for Wood since Carson Howard's now on the bench. Dixon provides a lot of size, physicality, and a rebounding prowess out there, number 11. Rotman, we mentioned him going to Roanoke next year. He'll be with teammate Andrew Madeline. Hurry, into and out of trouble. Ellery. A chaotic <laughs> possession so far for North Catholic. They are so lucky to still have this basketball. Rotman, contact, no foul call. And Maxi came up with it and threw it away. Contact and a foul. And John Mosco is not going to like that one. Just total miscommunication there. And good for North Catholic to take advantage. Well, just Wood getting a little bit too far ahead of themselves once they got the offensive possession. And now North Catholic, an opportunity to extend the lead with 1.07 remaining here in the third quarter. By everybody just contributing for North Catholic. Including Jason Sickett, the junior, six foot. Tell you what, they got every guy on this roster is between six foot and six foot three. The balance of them almost entirely are exactly six foot one. And poor Jason Sickett is six foot zero. He's the only guy under six foot one. There's a three. Green. How big is that? From Michael Green, a six foot sophomore. And Will, you haven't seen many sophomores you know, get significant minutes. Oh. Plathea was that type of guy last year. Of course, several years ago, they were almost all sophomores. And that led to that excellent senior team that was state runner-up. But Michael Green getting good minutes here. Now Bethea just can't quite get it going here today. No, absolutely. Uh, guys like Mike. So last year, Josh Reed was also part of that sophomore crew that um, <laughs> gets minutes. <laughs> wow. Rotman scores. It's an eight-point game. 17 seconds left in the third quarter. And after all this, you feel like Wood has put all this effort to get back into the game. North Catholic is outscoring them by one here in the third quarter. They just don't let up. Clock issue, I believe.
Good eyes there, Bob. 16 seconds left in the third quarter. North Catholic will stay with this full court pressure and now they'll back off. Just one on one here as Rotman is gonna shepherd Bethea across the timeline. Down to five seconds, tough shot for Bethea. Didn't have any iron. And that's the end of the third quarter. Shot would not count if it went. 58 to 50, North Catholic. The final game of six here today has delivered. Delivered in a big, big way. You know, North Catholic, it looks like they're, you know, they're they're running a you know fast pace, fast break off, fast pace, fast break offense, but they're really running just a very patient offense, working for good shots at a fast pace. Yeah. I mean, they are just so impressive in their patience, but yet when the uh, shot presents itself, they're not hesitating. They're going for it, and you just have to love it. And on the other side, Wood, I tell you what, their defensive pressure really picked up, I thought, in the third quarter. But I'd sure like to see them just, you know, uh, maybe work for something other than, than a three. Thankfully, they started nailing some of those three-pointers in quarter number three, Will. Yeah, absolutely. So two things agree with both points. Uh, yeah, number one, North Catholic. They do like that fast tempo, but there's nothing out of control about it. No. I mean, they had they had one kind of sloppy possession. They end up getting fouled off of it. So the, I really, really enjoy watching North Catholic's offense. For um, Archbishop Wood, two things. Number one, we talked about the size advantage. Carson Howard hasn't really had many post-ups. It's a lot of offensive rebounds for him, uh, but maybe getting a guy like Carson Howard involved or Marcus Dixon, Marcus Dixon in the game right now, um, and secondly, I believe Jaleel Bethea, my, my count could be wrong, I have him like 0 for 8 from 3 right now. Wow. You, you got to think if he just knocks down 1 or 2, even if he had knocked down 1 or 2, you know, so far, it's just a different game because Jaleel Bethea, I mean, he goes with the flow, right? If, if he knocks down a 3, he's going to try to get a stop on defense so he can shoot another one. Um, so it goes both ways. They run the double ball screen for Michael Green. Good look for Salem, yes. Oh, a design play out of the third quarter timeout. Yeah, really smooth on that one. Good shooter. That pass came to the feet of number 15, Larson. Nice catch. Madelon. Tough shot, won't go. Here comes Bethea. Numbers for Archbishop Wood. Pull up. Rebound there by Reed, couldn't control it. And North Catholic loses the basketball. Archbishop Wood has it with 7-11 to go. They've gotten close a bunch of times, Will, but they haven't been able to tie or take the lead, haven't really even been able to get within one possession. Now feels like the time if you're a Viking fan. So what an opportunity this is to get a, a baseline out of bounds play you feel like you might have a Jaleel Bethea corner three or a Mike Green corner three drawn up off this baseline out of bounds play. Except where they're inbounding it is pretty close to that corner, so it might be tough. Salem steps it back. No good. There's Dixon. Everything but the finish. Jaleel Bethea called for the foul. Has to be careful. And that's the surprising part of this game, that Archbishop Wood hasn't enjoyed a bigger margin in the rebounding aspect. Well, but they got one there, Bruce, and they had a great look. Dixon just softly got the back iron. Andrew Madelon. Hurry. No oh. good. I think partially blocked. Bethea traveled. He traveled with it. And he's got to be really careful. I think he's one more like that away from getting attacked. That's just kind of where I'm at at it. He had a little something to say to the official after the play. You can kind of see it, the tail end there. And that would be big, right? 
you know, any type of technical foul at this point in the game for Archbishop Wood. They're already finding it hard enough to score here. Oh. There's a steal. Nice floater. Uh, yep. Yeah, Wood really had the numbers, and North Catholic did not respond to the press. Ilsan Bea has not been seen much on the floor, but like Will said, good body control. There was a charge waiting to happen. Instead comes to the jump stop, floats it home. Oh, There's that, a block. That was a great defensive play. Rotman. Too strong. And a rebound and a foul. Rotman called for the foul. Fifth team foul against North Catholic. Archbishop Wood now a chance to tie this game. How about some in internal fortitude, Bruce, from this Archbishop Wood team? They didn't have it. Don't have their best stuff here tonight. Playing against a team that can light it up, and they found a way to crawl back in it. Not just playing against a team that can light, up, light it up, playing against a team that has lit it up. I mean, they have played really good basketball. But Wood has really started to hit some threes here in the second half. And that helps. Here's a deep one. No good, but Salem will pull this one back. 5.54 to play. And a good finish. One quick move to the basket for Josh Reed. Josh Reed hurt his ankle on that take. And a jump ball is called. Hurry and Bethea. It was a pretty good look here. A lot of these have fallen today for North Catholic. And a great battle underneath there. Hurry only 6-1, Bethea 6-4. Alternate possession will keep it here with North Catholic. Interesting to see what kind of play they run on the out of bounds here. Hurry. How does that pass get all the way there? Rotman, there's the back cut by Hurry, and it's taken right oh. off his hands by Josh Reed. John Mosco can't believe it, and the partisan Archbishop Wood crowd agrees with him. Wow. As does the film. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, <laughs> tough angle there. Official was right under the basket. And two shots for Max Hurry. North Catholic will be in the bonus now. At the next foul, yes. At the next foul for Archbishop Wood. Oh, got the roll. Here comes Josh Reed. Bethea, good look for three. It's good. And at long last, Archbishop Wood is tied. And no surprise, it's when Jalil Bethea starts to get going. Five minutes left. North Catholic has had the answer all night. And the foul is called against Gus Salem. He'll shoot one and one and Salem a little dinged up. Yeah, that's the matchup that North Catholic wanted was get Andrew Manilon down on the post there. And all Salem could do is really foul. He's not he's not strong enough. Well he, he to was handle hurt on, on that. You could see he had hurt his ankle and, and couldn't guard couldn't guard him, so he just took it was a take foul. First is good for Madelon. We've talked a lot about him and his teammates, Matt, Mac, Ro, I beg your pardon, Max Rotman, who is going to go play both of them at Roanoke next year. Max Hurry, also a college level talent. One of two that time for Madelon. 
Josh Reed all the way to the hoop. Extra pass. Milan Dean. Green for three. Bang! And Archbishop Wood has come all the way back. And it has been on the back of the three-pointer. They started a catch fire. 4.27 to go. Rotman looking for help. And Madelon will pull this back. I do give North Catholic a lot of credit for just staying within themselves and running their offense here. Let's see if they can turn it into a bucket. Madelon, that's a good move, contact. They didn't call the foul, Dean. But they uh, throw it down. Oh, we'll finger roll it home. Timeout, Jim Rocco. Largest lead for Archbishop Wood at four. Just a great run by Archbishop Wood here in quarter number four. But they started to hit, that, starting with Bethea, hitting three pointers. And that's really what's turned the tide here. Full time out on the floor. The day's final game, sixth game of this shootout comes down to this. There is so much good basketball in the state of Pennsylvania and beyond. It is just a blast to be here. And I tell you what's great. A lot of Catholic League basketball here today. Well, we know that we're going to be following the St. Joe's Preps and the West Catholics and the Father Judges and the Archbishop Ryans of the world, of course, Archbishop Wood. But, man, excited to see what North Catholic does the yeah. rest of this year, right? Sure. Yeah, you know, we see these teams here. We see they play hard, and we follow them the rest of the year, like Central York. I yeah, mean, sure. how impressive were they today? You know, even in a losing effort. Right. I'm with you. And of course, Redding. I mean, Redding is like the second family. But they to, were so us, impressive so. in this event last year, too. Absolutely. You know? I just mean, I, we do a lot with Redding, you know, the same way that we do with like an Archbishop Wood or an Archbishop Ryan. I, they're, for me, they're honorary members of, of this league or of Philadelphia basketball, as far as I'm concerned. They're, certainly, we love doing stuff with Rick Perez and the Redding team on Bob Long Sports. Now, Max Hurry. 340 left. Oh, that's an excellent pass. Got to go up with it. Instead, a three, and it's oh, good. Oh, man. Big time. Just great unselfishness with the basketball. Andrew Madelon takes the oh, charge. Oh, boy. He hits the three and takes the charge. The uh, off arm got extended by Reed. I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that that would be an offensive foul. I mean, he tackled him. Tried to tackle him, wow. What are you talking about? Who, who tackled whom? I, w I had that as an absolutely offensive I, Really? I did oh as well. I did as well. Madelon, I, I mean, feet were just sliding all over the place. Yeah, a as was, but he was staying in front of his man. Yeah, it's not, that's not part of the rule. Yeah. Um, I thought the shoulder went right through the center of the yeah. chest, and, and that's. Yeah. And straight on, too, right? Yes. Sometimes the shoulder can kind of get you you're on the side. I, I thought Madelon had him at the spot. A big time senior going to play at the next level, Andrew Madelon. He hit the three, he caused the turnover. Can he give him the lead again or on an assist? Had a hand on the offensive rebound, numbers for Wood. Rotman, good job getting rid of the ball, numbers. Did he travel with it? No, he lost it. And a held ball situation should give it to Archbishop Wood. Another look. Got a little helter skelter here. Well, and Madelon came to the jump stop, and because of the 6'9 Carson Howard will, had to find something else to do with the basketball. And it was the right pass to the corner, an open three in the corner, just it couldn't knock it down. Yeah. Seemed like that was the first time all night that 
there was any type of hesitant hesitance in North Catholic at actually going for the basket. Well, Nick Larson better in the in the painted area, and he was the one in that corner for a three. So probably just not his game. I mean, there's an eternity left in this game. 2.54 to go. Milan Dean. He's good off the bounce, but Rotman there with him, and Jim Rocco claps from the bench. Good use of the pivot foot, Josh Reed. Three-point lead. Yeah, that's really tough to defend. Hurry lost the ball, offensive foul. Down goes Deuce Maxey's shoe, he'll take it. Yeah, a little out of control going to the basket. He actually lost the ball too, but prior to making contact with Maxey. Foul situation, eight fouls committed by Archbishop Wood, six committed by North Catholic. Three-point lead for the Vikings in their home event. The premier event here held at Archbishop Wood on the basketball side all year. Jaleel Bethea, and it's Max Hurry guarding him. Bethea, no good, and now numbers the other way. Up and under, counted oh. and won. He'll have a chance to tie. Andrew Madelon. Did you expect anything other than that from Andrew Madelon? He just went with such reckless abandon to that basket and up and in. Chance to tie the score here with 2.09 remaining. Madelon missed it, had the opportunity to tie. Trouble on the sideline, somehow Wood kept it in. Open three, Green, the sophomore southpaw. I'll tell you what, just ice water in those veins. Boom. Wow, biggest three of the night thus far. A minute 52 to go. Timeout on the floor, 30 second timeout. And now we're gonna turn that into a full timeout. Let's Michael Green, big time shots all night. And, yeah, and yeah. that's a kid that was playing JV last year. I mean, it goes to show how, how well-rounded this Archbishop Wood program is, because certainly they have their transfers, like a, a Gus Salem or a uh, Carson Howard, but they have their homegrown guys that, that aren't playing varsity their freshman year and are willing to stick it out, play some JV ball, um, like a Milan Dean or a Mike Green. Uh, and it's really- How about, how about Mike Nass from years pre past, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Tyson Howard. Tyson, Tyson, Howard, Howard. Played, Tyson Howard played JV his junior year. That same year that they made it to the state final against Reading, the beginning of the year, he was playing JV. I'll tell you what, you look at those North Catholic Trojans on the bench, just intently drawing it up there. Well, they're not done. Not, they are not, not, not done. Long, <laughs> not by a long shot. Only down four with a minute 52 remaining. They're so good and efficient on the offensive end as well. A smaller school playing against a 6A, Archbishop Wood. Still 6A for basketball, yes? Yes. So they were down to 5A for football this year. You just never know. I believe still at the 6A level. I believe so as well. 1.45 to go. Max Rotman throws oh. it into the stands. Candidly, that was close to hitting an unsuspecting patron in the face. I mean. <laughs> that would have hurt. Yeah, he was not looking. 
He was not in what you'd call a defensive position. Wasn't ready to catch to shoot, was he, Bruce? No, not at all. 132 to go. It's been one heck of a comeback from Archbishop Wood. Tells you a lot about this program. Can they finish it off, though? Jaleel Bethea hasn't been his night, but gets it when it matters. Yeah, just great body control through the lane. Now an important possession here, really need a three. 107 to go. Long developing possession here. Rotman, oh they had the open three. Tough shot. How about oh! the oh! <laughs> Bruce, you're killing me, man. <laughs> Counting in one, though. I'll take some credit for that as well. He spun that the opposite direction of the of where I was <laughs> unbelievable. Oh my goodness. And it's such a critical moment. <laughs> <laughs> he got to the other side, threw it up on the I, I can't even explain and it, it. Hung there it's on the rim. It's a critical moment, so let's destroy the levels. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Um, All right, so they got the bucket that they needed. They can cut it to a one possession game here. Checking with the score booth or the scoring. Uh, it's Matt Ellery who hit the shot. He'll be at the line. Got a chance to make it a one possession game here. Ellery does it. Timeout. Timeout on the floor. Forty-seven seconds left. Archbishop Wood basketball. Bruce, now what? What do you do if you're North Catholic? You've only committed six team fouls. So if you let's just say there's a Carson Howard on the floor that isn't the best foul shooter. Now maybe John Mosco won't have him on the floor, but you can send a less than proficient foul shooter to the line here if you don't get an immediate steal. And it's gonna be a Single bonus situation. I, I, think, I think you're following quickly. Uh, I, and maybe even in the backcourt. Yeah, there are probably three guys that you don't want to foul. Jaleel Bethea, Gus Salem. Yeah, it's whoever gets the ball and first. Mike Green. No, but, uh, no, I, I no. don't agree with you, Bruce. You think I think you, what Will's saying is You correct. think you foul immediately? No. Well, I mean, who, you foul whoever gets the ball first who's of, of those three players, the lower percentage. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Whoever gotcha. gets that ball first, the lower percentage guy, you're fouling them immediately. I'm okay to wait seven to ten seconds to see if you can get a steal in the backcourt and then look to do something. Here we go. It's Michael Green. Across the timeline, double team, nearly poked away, and a foul oh. is called. The ball was in the hands of North Catholic when that whistle blew. Tough call there. Green, front end of the one and one. And Will, you know the answer to this. You think games are won and lost on the front end? That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Never more true than right now. And Green calmly strokes it. Boy, he's had a good second half. He's had a good complete game, Bruce. I mean, this kid is really, really solid off the bench. Knows his game might, well. Too. Might be a guy I go down to get for an interview. Or you, Will, or whomever goes down. Yeah, Will's turn. It is Will's turn. You haven't done one yet. You want to do that today, Will? Sure. All right. Still a long way to go, though. 40 seconds left. Rotman looking for help. 
Back screen for Ellery. Lost the ball. Archbishop Wood basketball. Another look here, and Ellery, a good hand in there defensively, and he just kind of lost the ball. Now North Catholic needs to foul right away. Josh Reed sent to the line, still one and one. 25.6 remaining. Making this front end, it's gonna go a long way to secure this win. Green taken off the floor, offense, defense, as Marcus Dixon takes his place. So now a two possession game. Got it. Now a three possession game, Bruce. All important, as you mentioned. A three from the corner, Ellery. Rebound. And the foul. 17 seconds left. Archbishop Wood, they're going to escape here against a gritty North Catholic team that came in from Pittsburgh, established its brand of basketball, and had the state runners up at the large school classification on the brink multiple times. Yeah, just what a great, gritty performance. They never backed down, continued to be patient, ran their offense, were aggressive on defense, and are gonna come up a little bit short. You know, this is a this is a game that the score is not gonna reflect how close this game yep. was. Yep. Reed hits them both and will. If, while you're getting a player, if you could potentially snag John Mosco as well. What a wonderful event this has been. And ask him about the day and putting this together. That would be great. Archbishop Wood will put it in park. And they're going to win the basketball game, 78-69. Six games, one day. What an event. The Diane Mosco Foundation shootout. What an absolute blast this has been to do, Bruce. They can all kind of take a breather now. <laughs> what an excellent event and what a marathon for us. But more importantly, what an excellent day for these young men, for the six winners and really all 12 teams that played here today. Not entirely sure where Will is in the areas in the mass there. of humanity down there. And maybe he's just gonna go grab John. And it will be great to hear from John for the event that he put together no, no, no. here today. And so there's Will Ryan down there with John Mosco, our good buddy who put this event together. Down here with Coach John Mosco. First of all, Coach, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that North Catholic team tough. Uh, oh, what yeah. did you know about them coming in? We knew they wanted to push the ball. They wanted to shoot a lot of threes. And they get in the lane, jump, stop, and kick to the open man. And we tried to play discipline, but we're young. Um, four new starters, even though we're getting ink on some of them, but they don't, they're not all disciplined. And, you know, we just tried to stay calm with them. And on offense, we tried to move. Once we started moving, we were able to get open shots. Awesome. And something that uh, our whole broadcast kind of saw was the big impact from Mike Green off the bench, yes. someone who played JV last year. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about uh, him? Him, Mir Dean, Deuce, they all played JV last year. But Mir Mike, he struggled against Penn Charter. And I just told him he's got to play with confidence, catch the ball, relax. And when he when he does that and he's open, shoot the ball. like. And he, he didn't try to over penetrate or anything. He just took jump shots when he was open and he made them. Absolutely. And he helped a lot and he made foul shots down there. And just this day as a whole, always such a great event for yes. such a great cause. Yeah. We just wanted to thank you so much no, again. Thank, for thanks, us. Bob Long, and you guys for doing everything and, and, you know, putting it on. It's, you know, everybody's like, why do you play these teams? It, like, we haven't won in two years. We lost in seven overtimes. And then last year, a heartbeat uh, breaker to George School. But, 
for the most part, there was great games. You get a lot of great talent in Philadelphia in the area. They come out, support it, and the kids play hard. You saw the last couple games. <laughs> they were, <laughs> they were excited, yeah. yeah. After the first ones that weren't that good. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, Coach Moscow, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you again for a great event. Yeah. And uh, go celebrate with your Thanks. team. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks to Coach Moscow. Truly one of our favorites here in the Philadelphia area. Thanks to all of you high school basketball fans across the state, or across the country, and across the world. Really appreciate you being part of our day here. For Nasir Smith, who did the first two and a half games with us, great to have him on board. For Will Ryan, broadcast extraordinaire, and he's going to go put the jersey on for LaSalle for next week as well. For Bruce Badgley, Mr. District 3, but also you're making your way here into District 1, District 12 territory. So happy to have you. For all of us here at Bob Long Sports, Bob Long saying so long. The marathon has concluded, and it finishes with the home team, Archbishop Wood, a gut check victory, 78-69 to over North Catholic. Thanks again for everyone that's been part of the day, and we'll see you next week, Wednesday at 4 o'clock, as LaSalle takes on Lincoln, just the start of a wonderful high school basketball season. Good night, everybody.